It's May 1999. This is Comics Comment. I'm your host and fellow comic book nerd, Robin Taylor. This month, Dynasty aired its last episode. Kenya banned ivory exports, and Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade opened in theaters. With the Inferno crossover in the rearview mirror, continuity trundles on. This month, John Byrne jumps back into the Marvel Universe with both feet, following up West Coast Avengers with the launch of She-Hulk. This was one of my favorite books back in the day, and it was hilariously self-aware and meta before meta was a thing. She-Hulk was realized as a great character in Burns Fantastic Four run, but the way the character would be treated uh, later would replace smart, strong, and sexy with slut-shaming. Shulky was the embodiment of one version of femininity, but also relatively sexist given the initial premise was that a competent adult professional woman like Jan Walters would also be obviously repressed and need She-Hulk to let her fun side out. The book remains funny, but Burns' art is not helped by Bob Wyack's inks, which reduce the appearance in depth as they did on Burns' Hulk run. Burns also does art duty on New Mutants, wraps up Starbrand, and contributes a short story to Marvel Comics Presents. Burn coming back to Marvel after several years at DC was a big deal at the time. Chris Claremont follows up Inferno with a snappy lady-centric one-off where the female X-Men blow off steam by shopping and dancing. It's cliche, trite, and sexist, but it's still fun, and introduces Jubilee to the team. Claremont also introduced Joe Fixit to Wolverine as the Hulk is imported to straighten things out for the mobsters in Madripoor. Excalibur is a Ron Lim drawn fill-in issue where Alan Davis's art is sorely missed. It's a straight follow-up to Inferno, finding Megan looking for her sense of self by hanging out with various ethnic groups in New York City, while Captain Britain blunders through superheroing and loses his powers. Peter David introduces the dream-making Glorian by heavily referencing Nightmare on Elm Street and the Incredible Hulk. I didn't care for this storyline even in the day, and it eventually involves the Shaper of Worlds, one of my favorite characters. Thor, the Avengers, and Fantastic Four are still keeping the presses running with forgettable outings. 1989 was the very height of the Cold War, and Captain America attacks this concept by having the, a group of Soviet superheroes attempt to defect. Last month, the Avengers were framed in an attack on the Soviets, and this month, Cap heads into Russia to stop an international incident. This is the year of the following Cap having been replaced and taking the mantle by the U.S. agent. It's fun to see Cap back in action at a period in time where U.S. jingoism was still fun and not gross. Daredevil further explores Matt's latest fall from grace by picking up in a bar. Daredevil swigs beer and feels sorry for himself when a shapeshifter seducer shows up and is eventually revealed to be Mephisto. Matt's spirit is saved by homeless men who invite him to have dinner with them at a shelter. Iron Man this month is a televised battle against the Mandarin, which is long on tech solutions to the power of the Mandarin's rings and short on character, up until the final pages. For months, a flirty one-night stand of Tony Stark's named Kathy has been stalking him throughout his properties and businesses. Tony has dismissed her as a bubble-headed sex-drunk bimbo and pays the price in this issue when she shoots him in the chest. This staggered me back in 1989, and it's still incredibly powerful, and it will reshape Tony's world for the next year across the Marvel Universe. The Punisher gives in to an area-appropriate Australia obsession, and it has Frank follow the perp down under. Somehow Frank has all of his guns in a country that even then had moderate gun control. A mass shooting in 1996 would bring in strict gun laws and prevent further mass killings. Todd McFarlane would bring his stamp to Venom in this month's Amazing Spider-Man, though it's more of a tease. Spidey dispatches Hydra-Man, and then the central conflict is Peter dealing with Aunt May's boyfriend, Nathan, being a gambling addict. Finally and spectacular, Joe Robinson is found guilty for concealing the identity of a murderer for several decades. The murderer is Tombstone, and Joe ends up in his cell next to him. A Spanish werewolf is dating Gloria Grant, creating a new mystery for Spidey as, he, as the Kingpin dudes keep getting knocked off. Finally, Doctor Strange is a cool little weird story by Peter Gillis, the creator of Strike Force Mortuary. It's a small Defenders reunion as Valkyrie shows up to smack fools around. That's it for May 1989. The X-Books and Spidey are car carrying the line with half the lineup treading water. Does it get better? Come back next month. This has been Comics Comment, Excelsior.